Is the cross a pagan symbol? Gently put, yes. Was the Messiah crucified on a cross? The Messiah perhaps made a cross when he was crucified. The Romans in the ancient world had um, uh, about eight foot or nine foot pole already embedded in the ground. Uh, the person who was going to be crucified carried what's called the patabulum, and they carried it on their they carried it on their back. They carried it to uh, they carried it to the upright stake where they were suspended upon the stake, and it formed a cross. The question is. Is this something that the Most High ordained and endorsed? Is this something that Christ would embrace? Is this something that the apostles uh, created? Is this something that they ordained in their ministry? And, and the answer is no, brothers and sisters. This is something that has been adopted by the uh, church of the third century AD. This was not a practice in the first century. This was not a practice in the second century. It became a practice in the early to mid third century. And so, yes, there is a problem with uh, this form of iconography, this form of um, uh, symbol veneration, because it it is the antithesis of what God wants us to do in worshiping him in spirit and in truth. We have a prohibition against uh, relic veneration, worshiping and serving images. Let's look at something. Let's turn our attention in the New Living Translation to Deuteronomy chapter 4, 15 through 19. This is what Moses writes. But be very careful. You did not see the Lord's form or Yah's form on the day he spoke to you from the heart of the fire at Mount Sinai. So do not corrupt yourselves. By making an idol in any form, whether of a man or a woman, an animal on the ground, a bird in the sky, a small animal that scurries along the ground, or a fish in the deepest sea. And when you look up into the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the forces of heaven, don't be seduced into worshiping them. The Lord your God, Yah Elohim, gave them to all the people of the earth. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, 15 through 19. But what I notice is that there is not supposed to be any imagery of the sun, any relics um, replicating the sun, symbolizing the sun. So when we look at the cross in terms of what it represents in antiquity, in the pagan community, it represented the symbol of their sun god. For example, Shamash, the Assyrian deity, uh, was venerated by the Maltese cross. Uh, and he is god of the sun and god of justice. So yes, there are some major issues. The biggest question is, if we're being apostolic, did the apostles introduce the cross as a sign? Absolutely not they would have known immediately that this is a form of idolatry that violates the first two commandments of the Decalogue, that is the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments, and certainly complement it with what we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 4, 15 through 19. I'm going to read a secular piece of history to you. This comes from a conversation between a Latin Christian apologist named Minucius of Felix and he is arguing with a pagan about the use of a cross. This pagan has accused Minucius Felix and the Christian community of worshiping a criminal who died on a cross, worshiping as well as worshiping a cross. I want us to pay attention to Minucius Felix's response to the pagan. Very, very, very interesting. This is from the Anti-Nicene Fathers, volume 4, paragraph 29. Minucius says, Crosses, moreover, we neither worship nor wish for. You indeed, who consecrate gods of wood, 
adore wooden crosses, perhaps as part of your gods. For your very standards as well as your banners and flags of your camp, what else are they but crosses glided and adorned? Your victorious trophies not only imitate the appearance of a simple cross, but also that of a man affixed to it. I repeat, that of a man affixed to it. So we have Minucius Felix saying to a pagan, you all not only worship crosses as a symbol of your gods, but you even have a man attached to your cross. Sounds familiar? It should, because Roman Catholicism has what's called the crucifix, and this is a man affixed to a cross. This is what Dr. Uh, Merle F. Unger writes. That the cross was widely known as an emblem in pre-Christian times has been clearly shown by independent investigators. Indeed, it was a well-known heathen sign, the vestment of the priests of Horus, the Egyptian god of light, are marked with a cross. This is from the New Unger's Bible Dictionary, page 263. I find it interesting that um, Dr. Vine would write, in the uh, Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words. Very interesting, volume one, page 256. He says, by the middle of the third century AD, and I agree, the churches had either departed from or had travested certain doctrines of the Christian faith. In order to increase the prestige of the apostate ecclesiastical system, pagans were received into the churches apart from regeneration by faith, and were permitted largely to retain their pagan signs and symbols. Hence the Tau, or T, in its most frequent form, with the cross piece Lord, was adopted to stand for the cross of Christ. So, excellent question, um, viewer. But again, we are concerned, and we do say this with all respect, there are many brothers and sisters that we are familiar with, good people that wear crosses. They have tattoo crosses, crosses on the ears, but they don't know the ancient origins of the cross. And they don't know that the church adopted it. And they felt like they had a premise to adopt it. Two reasons. Seemingly, the Christ, uh, or Christ rather, was uh, crucified on a cross. Cross in Greek is staro, uh, staru, staro, uh, staros. It means an upright pole, or it means a piece of wood, timber, or beam. So a cross doesn't mean a T shaped form, if you will. Um, it simply means in Greek a piece of wood. And so with the Messiah's crucifixion, uh, his death, it is argued that he was crucified upon one piece of wood, one temper, uh, excuse me, one piece of timber, which we refer to as the crooks um, simplex, or he was crucified with two pieces of timber called the crooks emissa. So whatever the case, they are pagan in origin. And this is something that uh, Emperor Leo knew in the 8th century A.D., let me read this to you. In A.D. 726, Emperor Leo would forbid the use of images in religious worship. He felt that they violated the first two commandments of God, which was one of the reasons the Muslims had invaded his empire. It was a demonstration of God's wrath for idolatry. His son, Constantine V, would enforce the prohibition of image worship and veneration at the Council of Hierea, A.D. 754. Leo's agent seized much of the church's property and goods, which included icons and statues that were objects of veneration, as well as valuable plates, candlesticks, altar clothes, and reliquaries that were decorated with religious figures. So, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, when we look at the cross, the crucifix, does it have anything to do with the Messiah? The church made it have something to do with the Messiah. But the cross 
in and of itself as a religious image and icon had been used by the pagans to represent false gods for thousands of years. I hope this answers your question. May the blessings of Yah be upon you. If you need more information pertaining to this subject, visit our website at www.nccicharlotte.com. We look forward to your next question. May the blessings of the Most High be with you. Shalom.